it is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know I'm Adam here with you. Yes, it is another round table. And tonight we have some guest DJs and some guest stars, you can say. They are star DJs and they're from just over the border in Indiana, which is still suburban Chicago for those people outside the Chicago area. But we still have a lot of great local and distant DJs from all around the country. You know, we have Jeff over in North Carolina. We have Tommy running around somewhere in Wisconsin um, going to school. We have Mr. Dixon in the great state of Ohio and Matt out in beautiful California. So we have some great DJs here as well as myself in the middle right here in Chicagoland. And, uh, you know, it's always great weather. Uh, right now it's uh, actually not bad today, but we're sort of go down to 40. And I have my first wedding coming up of the season and Friday, and they're talking rain and snow mix, which I'm just looking forward to. Lots of love, lots of fun things, and you got to love it being a DJ. And if you're a DJ, you're here watching this, having fun. Again, we talk about gear. We talk about all the fun things out there. We talk about all the excitement in the DJ world, uh, gear, how to, and how we do things. As I always say, there's no right or wrong answers. We're just sharing our opinions, our information, and what we've done that works best for our businesses. At the end of the day, you have to decide what works best for you. And you know what? Everyone here has social media. So this is the thing you need to do. I've, Brentley's not here tonight, but don't forget, you send him information. He sends you a Brentley, DJ Brentley sticker. Take a picture, ran the hashtag, tag him, put him on there, take a picture with it, and show some love to him. Everyone here has social media. Make sure you follow them on YouTube. Links are down below. And make sure that you click the like button, subscribe, and check the bell icon on YouTube because the el algorithm on YouTube sometimes likes to, uh, how can I say it, not like us. But I also want to thank all the new subscribers coming up here on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm not a million subscribers, but uh, Every journey starts with a step forward. And again, I appreciate everyone who has just recently subscribed, as well as my old subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting the show and enjoying it. The uh, other thing also I see, uh, cool thing is in the chat. Cool thing, how are you, sir? Hopefully you're enjoying yourself in South Carolina. And we're going to go ahead and start with uh, Jordan Taylor. Jordan Taylor, I know you're new to the show. Welcome. And if you want to explain to everyone else, what you do and i know you're both djs but what else you do besides djing so we do the like you said we do dj in photo booth we have um also our decor and design so we do centerpieces we can decorate your ceremony aisle um and really we just try to make it magical for you um and yeah i mean it's it's fun. <laughs> Try to make it more of an experience than just DJing where, you know, we're not, I don't know. We have donut walls and uh, candy, candy buffet tables. tables. Um, we try to be, you know, someone that you can come to and you don't have to stress about dealing with other vendors or maybe you've just got so much going on and you don't know who to contact or what even to do. Um, and so when you come to us, you know, even though we're not photographers or we might not have transportation, you know, we do know people who are great photographers or great limo services. And we, we want to help, you know, also get those people name, names out there. So, so yeah, we kind of bring it all together with the coordination and, um, you know, we'll coordinate the whole event and get with the vendors, make sure they're there on time and that they don't have to worry about it on that day, that we kind of set the mood and, you know, make sure everything goes on. And when we do coordination, we even go as far as make the timeline. And like I said, reach out to the vendors, um, do all that work with the venue. Um, because, you know, they need to party. It's their day to party. Why worry about all that stuff? And you can have us do it. <laughs> that, that's very, very true. To, and, you know, one of the things <laughs> I will say this, uh, being across the way from them, I had the pleasure of uh, working with them at a couple of wedding shows. And uh, they're always very, very personal. People always love talking tech. You know, um, I was talking to your husband uh, <laughs> at the show a little bit about gear and stuff like that. And it, it's one of the things that, you know, as a fellow DJ and as someone who is in the wedding industry, uh, knees deep like uh, Tracy and I are, 
it's one of the things that uh, offering additional services is not a bad thing if you can do that. But, you know, it's one of the things when you look at everything out there and having those contacts, having, you know, photographers you can call or, or a limo company or catering company or this or that, that you can make a, you're a resource to those customers. That's an important thing. And I feel that that's a huge, huge part of our business because as DJs and as you all of you guys know for doing an event, you're kind of command center of stuff. And even, you know, uh, Jeff does, you know, he does school function, he does corporate function, he does, you know, weddings, you know, Matt does, you know, school functions, corporate functions, weddings, and Dwayne, the same thing, and, and uh, Tommy does. Everyone here, when you're a DJ, you have that DJ booth or DJ area set up. People come to you ask for questions. I get people asking me where the bathroom's at. I get people asking mm -hmm. me when the bar open. Uh, what's for dinner tonight? It's like, you ordered dinner, you have whatever you ordered with the, the couple, you know? So it's... It's like, I have no idea. So a lot of times, a lot of those things like that, we try to find out. So when people ask, we can at least be somewhat uh, knowledgeable where stuff is at and say, oh, well, restroom's out the door to the right. Or, you know, oh, bar opens at, you know, at cocktail hour, which is after the wedding, you know. So stuff like that, it's always um, great to have the information. And, you know, Tracy, she works on that very heavily on the coordination time mattress side of things. So it's great to have that resource and i'm gl glad you guys are here tonight make glad you make it um unfortunately um terry is uh got a gig tonight and i also have brentley has a school function with his daughter so we want them to have fun and enjoy yourself and we hope to see him back here again next week and I want to start off with the question of tonight the first question tonight hey hey adrian e how are you doing um I remember those two, buddy. Oh yeah, you you, you saw him at the uh, the wedding show at uh, Thornton Distillery, um, and uh, cool thing says he has two school gigs next month. Good for you. So the first question is tonight. <coughs> um, I saw some stuff on social media, and I saw a DJ post and video of a wedding that they're doing, which is fine. You know, people post video or, or photos or pictures. To social media for weddings they've they've done but one of the things he had was a playlist from a, another wedding that um someone else did and he got a famous person or not i can't say famous but another probably a bigger youtuber uh wedding uh the playlist from that wedding and he was saying that uh, this is the best playlist ever thanks a lot to so and so and so and so I appreciate, you know, wherever, how they got the, the playlist. I, you know, great. But do you rely on other people's playlists when you do a, an event? Or do you work on your own playlist? So, like, me personally, I'm not going to use someone else's playlist. There are certain songs that work, you know, multiple times. Uh, but the thing is that I don't want to play the same thing over and over again. And I know I talked to Matt about this before, and Matt's very adamant upon this. And I know his, his place is... You know, he sees people gig logs doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, Matt, what about, what do you think? Do you think, like, again, there's services are out there that will give you a list of, you know, songs in order to play at a event? Would you pay for a service like that? Or if someone came to you and said, hey, I have the, uh, the playlist of so-and-so's wedding and they're a famous celebrity or whatever, uh, here, here's the playlist. Would you take that playlist and use that for your own wedding or event? Uh, if they're paying me for it, sure. Um, I mean, I, we cater to the couples. So to me, like, I know buddy doesn't like it, but if you want to send me 150 songs, go ahead. That just makes my job 10 times easier. Cause I don't even have to think about what to play. I just play off the list and, uh, maybe add in 10 or 15 other ones that might fit. So I'm all for couples doing more of the work. <laughs> well, I'm not talking couples. I'm talking about you actually going out and paying a service. Oh, I wouldn't do that. No, my playlists are already fired. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't need that crap. <laughs> yeah. Watch the bad language. No bad language. Sorry. Uh, my, I don't, um, I mean, I make the way that I do my weddings on Tuesdays, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, like I prep for the wedding. So I, I make all of their requests and must plays in a separate playlist. And then I make one that's other stuff that I think would fit. And then I kind of break it down a little further with like, I've started to experiment newly with it of like, having a folder for 
you know, stuff to try, like maybe 10 or 15 new songs that I maybe want to throw in the rotation and try it. Um, or like a couple of openers, like some classics. So, cause I, in the middle of the moment, like I don't, since I just moved over to this machine, like, and my old one had no indication of telling me when I ever added a song. Uh, I like to sort my iTunes or music, whatever, by like date added. So I see new stuff at the top and you can't do that with virtual. I mean, you can do that with virtual DJ, but I can't do that with virtual DJ until I've used it for a significant amount of time. And then I can use that first scene tab because everything is first seen last week or two weeks ago when I first started using it. So uh, that helps for me, but uh, I would not, no, I don't even use like DMS, direct music services, like curated playlists. I think they're all terrible. So uh, I, I have a very, I have a specific taste in music that I like. And I like to think that one of my strong suits is knowing what songs and what remixes are going to work well on a dance floor. And I just, you know, that's why people pay me. That's that's what I think as well. I'm going to go over to Ohio to Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon, if you had a choice to pay for a service or if you had a chance to get a hold of someone's playlist for another event that you're doing, would you do that? Would you take that playlist and say, hey, this is the best thing ever since sliced bread and use that playlist for your event? No, I'll use it for inspiration because I'm like, I'm, I'm a member of Crate Hackers. So um, they have a lot of different playlists for different situations. Like, for example, I'm not heavy into... Latin music, I might know the mainstream stuff, but I don't have like the deep crate kind of stuff. So I might use a playlist from them to see where they're going. But then, but I take that to use that to build my own um, playlist. Cause I like going and with like on um, Spotify, you could take a song or take a um, whole playlist and they'll look at the songs that you have in that playlist and then come up with other songs that kind of like fit that. So I like going down a rabbit hole and, you know, dig through the cranks and try to find my own and make it my own personal thing. I wouldn't play a playlist track one all the way down to, you know, the last song, right, in order. So, yeah, I do my own. I, I'll look at other people's playlists, and I did that a lot when I, were, when I first started doing weddings. I forget the website. It's, it's a group that's in... Um, think Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania or some somewhere where he every time they do a uh, a wedding they'll put their playlist of what they did like this is, we did a country music kind of on um, wedding or 80s and all that stuff so I'll look to see what they did to kind of like get inspiration but yeah yes and no I'll look at it but I wouldn't play it like verbatim and again that's what what it seemed like in this post on social media that they were basically just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, which again, looking at a playlist of someone else did looking for some hot songs. That's not bad to do. But the thing is that when you're just using someone else's work, it's it, to me, it's like kind of like uh take it's another novel and put your name on it, you know, plagiarism and one one you know, it's not what you want to do. But the thing is, that, again, different DJs, different ideas. That's me personally, I think. What someone else wants to do, it's entirely up to them. So I'm going to go over to our new DJs here tonight, Jordan and Taylor. Uh, what do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of someone taking another DJ's playlist and not just using it to see what's going on, but to actually um, you know, play one through whatever and go through that playlist? I'm going to say that just because it worked for one crowd, it ain't going to work for the other. I could kill it and play the same thing the next night and not. So I would say no, because you worked on that with your couple or like, say it was at a bar, that same, unless it's the same exact people in the same exact crowd and the same, you know, it, it could be even the same crowd. And I would say that it wouldn't necessarily work two days in a row. Just because, I mean, what's going on that day? I mean, was it someone's birthday? You know, like I I can look at that for inspiration, but I would say it wouldn't work. I I go back to mine, like when, when, you know, in your history after a gig and look at, you know, I was killing it and what was I playing and 
that kind of stuff. And but it's not, I don't think it's gonna work again. I might remember something that similar that might work or a transition or something like that that's gonna, you know, oh yeah, that was a good wordplay. We could do that again, but to do it just copy and paste, that's not, it's lazy. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not very you're not interacting with your couple enough then. Yeah, I feel like when you get to ways. know your couple, you kind of get to know them, their personality and what you think they'd like too. So, right. and we kind of try to aim towards the people that fit with us. So, like, what we want to play is what they want to hear, anyways. And, <laughs> but yeah, I'm with him. Uh, I think Matt is his name. Uh, with yep. if you want to give me 150 songs, and you want a baby, do. sure, <laughs> please give me 150 songs. I'm still gonna kill it. <laughs> And that, that's the thing is that, you know, understanding what's going on, what's transitioning a dance floor, I think it's part of that de deal. Um, <laughs> Nub Picard says, I use a Ouija board to build my song right. <laughs> playlists. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, Jeff says a Ouija board is always accurate. Uh, I have to take your both words for that one. Uh, cool thing says, I personally rely on BPM Supreme, my MP3 pool to build my own uh, DJ sets for every gig I play at. And again, you're, you're you're deciding what is best for that. And you also have to look at requests coming in because what worked at one wedding for requests may not work at another. And that's the other thing is that, you know, having someone's playlist, like if I gave uh, someone my, uh, my playlist from the last wedding I did um, in December of last year um, off of virtual DJ and say, hey, I'm going to play the same exact thing for this upcoming wedding it probably will not work different age group, different group, different people, different, different areas. And yeah. Um, so <laughs> new Picard says, uh, yes, Wika says so. Ah, uh, great. Um, again, just go ahead and you do your own thing with the Ouija board there. <laughs> Keep it away from me. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, keeping things away, uh, <laughs> Tommy, do you think you should keep away that list? Do you use the list to look through it? Or do you think that you need to uh, do, you know, line by line by line and say, hey, I'm going to use this list over again? Uh, well, when it comes to, like, curating crates and stuff, I do that all on my own. I don't take playlists from, like, online and just play those during a gig. Um, but if I'm given a list of songs or something from a couple or from a client... Uh, obviously I go through and try to play those, but I don't do it, you know, in a specific order unless I'm specifically told to, which I've never had that happen. Um, but I think it's important to add that level of like creativity to a set and to bring your own style into it. Uh, I mean, one of the places that I play at all the time, the bar that I play at all the time in Green Bay, I'm there most weekends and if i were to play the same set over and over and over it would get extremely repetitive and i would honestly probably get burnt out doing it uh so i'm always trying to add in something new i always want to add new songs uh even if it's a just a remix of a song that i usually play a different remix something something new to throw in just to keep things fresh and to add that level of creativity to my set and that's the thing is that Especially again, you're doing some gigs at a bar or a club. You don't you don't mind doing the same thing one or two nights in a row, but like before, you run into repetitiveness, especially doing that. And, and again, with private events, it's a totally different animal because different groups of people, even a club or a bar, different nights, different group of people. One night you There's get a totally bunch of people in the country, yeah. next night you get a bunch of people want a bunch of EDM. Mm -hmm. uh, but unless you listen to Matt, it's always EDM only, and that's it, you know. Uh <laughs> Let me go to uh, beautiful North Carolina there and ask Jeff. Jeff, what do you think of that? What do you think of someone with a list of songs and they gave it to you? Would you uh, would you use it well, as a tool or would you use it just to play it verbatim or what would you do? Hold on, let me interrupt real quick. Everybody loves EDM. Period. There's you can't be sad. <laughs> you can't be sad or not jumping up and down when like a really good EDM song is playing. Like it's just I. Maybe I just am so passionate about it, but like it's high energy, feel good music. Like it's not hip hop. It's not country. It's not like it's just especially when you play like big room, something like levels, for example, like you can't help but like want to dance to something like levels. It just it's a good song and it makes you feel good. I don't know. 
I, I, when couples say they don't want techno or EDM or any of that crap, I'm like, okay, but I'm going to probably throw a few in there just to surprise you. And then once the crowd reacts in a positive way, then we just run with it. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I would take it with a grain of salt. I've had people um, reach out to me on YouTube and have asked for my playlist from a certain gig that I have, uh, you know, uh, posted. And I just I don't even respond to them because I'm not going to give out my play playlist from for multiple reasons. But, you know, the main reason it's not going to work for you. You know, basically, if you want to know what I played, watch the, watch my video. It shows like 30, 40, 50 songs, you know, that I played that night. They're pretty much what uh, the main songs, they got the crowd dancing and it's visual. Um, so use that with a little grain of salt if you want. But to actually ask for my playlist, um, it's not going to work for you. You know, and, and then there's a lot of uh, songs on my playlist that did not work. And you will not see that in my video because I don't post it, you know. Um, so it, it takes it just takes experience to know what's going to work for you. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in, um, uh, a, a smooth mix takes backseat to playing the right song next. Uh, cause you got to read the crowd. I mean, that is 50% of what a DJ does is reading the crowd and figuring out what's the best song to play next, because there's any sorts of algorithm, all sorts of algorithms that will tell you this song will work next after this song, you know, it matches the beat, it matches whatever, you know, but, but an experienced DJ will look at the crowd and say, no, this should go next. I feel it. And then you're not right all the time, but a good DJ will figure it out and, you know, and, and have, have that, have that choice, have that song that's going to keep the crowd either on the floor or keep them entertained or keep them happy or, or, you know, it may be a slow song that, that just absolutely ramps up the dance floor with couples, you know, and it might be the time to do that. And you're not going to see that. It's, it's not going to show up in a playlist, you know, uh, you're not going to know that. So um, that's my take on it. I, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you very wholeheartedly because uh, it's one of the things that, knowing and understanding what happens in the flow is an important thing. So uh, I know I'm virtual DJ, Jeff, you're virtual DJ, right? Yeah. Uh, Matt is virtual <laughs> DJ. He's new to it. You guys are virtual, virtual DJ, DJ Taylor and uh, Jordan. Okay. Uh, Dwayne, you're Serato, right? Yeah. But I started off with virtual DJ. Okay. So I have both of them, but I'm mainly Serato. And then Tommy, you're mostly Serato too, right? I use Serato. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about Serato, but I know that on Virtual DJ, um, it gives you when you're playing songs on the pot, the bottom of it. If you're connected to interwebs, it tells you we should play next. And nine times out of ten, if you run into it, Jeff, but yeah, I, I know you guys uh, run into it, Jordan. Ask, and Taylor, don't ask the DJ. Yeah, it's like it, I already played that song already. It'll like you know, say you know, play this song. I'm like, already played that song, or it comes up with another song, and it's like. No, it doesn't fit. I already did a set of like three or four of that genre. I'm not going to add more into it because it's not working. Or, hey, we're already done with it. We're going on to the next. So it'd be it'd be useful if they could do it in like the playlists that you're already in. So it's like, oh, hey, this song will work really great next. Because like me, I don't pay attention to keys. I never have. Um, I just know what sounds good and what doesn't. But like other than the key match icon, that little live feedback thing at the bottom should you should be able to set that up so it's limited to a playlist. But I checked through all the forms and you cannot do that yet. Live feedback is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. And and the uh, the question of tonight right now is what is for dinner at Matt's house? Matt's always doing, having dinner uh, at this time because he's in California, so he's behind us. So what's at dinner? Pulled, pulled pork sandwiches on fresh boudin from San Francisco sourdough bread. If you've never, uh, if you've ever been to California Adventure, um, the bread factory is Boudin. Uh, they do like a little bread tour if you ever go to California Adventure. So, oh, there you go. My parents got me a fresh roll of sourdough, so we're gonna try that. Maybe some coleslaw. We'll see. Well, I will tell you this, uh, as Matt, if you can hear it, a little dietary thing. Um, Tracy uses sourdough. She's, um, 
she's been losing weight. She's been working on stuff. And one of the things sourdough actually helps with your, um, it helps you with the carbs. So you don't take the carbs. I can't remember what exactly what it is, but she read a book called the glucose goddess and she's doing all this stuff from that. And it's helped her lose weight. She feels better. Um, and one of the things she switched over bread to is actually sourdough and it works. It, it's one of the things I would definitely would say, uh, if you're looking for stuff, uh, I've changed some stuff too. uh, kind of reflect what she does. And it's very interesting. And you know, your health is very important as a DJ and you want to make sure you're healthy and good to go with stuff. You don't want to, uh, you know, not sound bad, uh, feeling down when you're trying to DJ and then, uh, Matt comes with EDM and drops a, you know, turn down for what? And all of a sudden people are just laying on the floor and not having fun because of the fact that they're tired and they're worn out or they have too much sugar and are jumping down for hours and hours later, you know. <laughs> South side, South side by DJ Snake. That's my like, if you want to test the waters on whether your crowd is like in the dubstep or like really wants to get down, South side by DJ Snake is a, is a good trial because it's like, just bordering the line of like dubstep, but it's also like has a countdown and more of a stronger beat. So like people that aren't EDM fans can still jump to it. And uh, I've got like a bunch of feelers. And the one I did this past week out on my Instagram, which is Mr. Brightside and the Thief, uh, is a pretty similar, like you can kind of test how dubstepy they are. And my crowd this weekend was kind of into it, but they were definitely bigger into the 2010s EDM. So I just rolled with that after three songs. But uh yeah, it's it. I agree. It's all about reading the crowd. Like, virtual DJ doesn't have a camera in the room, at least not yet. No, it does not. And, you know, again, maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now, who knows? You know, the yeah. everybody keeps talking about AI and stuff like that. And we talked about AI before in the show. And AI has got a long time before, you know, playing a playlist in a car or playing a playlist on a trip. Sure. But doing a wedding or something like that, I'm sure people will try and do that. And, I, I all you hear is from facilities when a people don't hire a DJ is bad times for those uh those events those weddings and you know people are some people go oh yeah they're dancing uh yeah maybe one or two people dance and they dance for a little bit then they hear another song they didn't like or you have people playing stuff from YouTube and they also you got a Geico commercial in the middle of walking down the aisle it's always great but uh, <laughs> you gotta love that stuff so. You know, again, looking through stuff, going through stuff and, and understanding things. One of the things as uh, DJs, we always like talking about gear and talk about stuff. And Pioneer just dropped a new audio mixer. Uh, actually, it's not Pioneer anymore. It's Alpha Theta. But they dropped a new audio mixer. Have you guys seen it or not? Anyone seen the, the picture, the video or anything? Yeah, just two. Um, they dropped a new uh, audio mixer. And again, it's designed for pro audio. And Cleveland Terry was uh, showing it on Instagram, and he said it was heavy as all heck. Um, it's really not designed for portable use. It's designed more for studio use. And with that said, uh, I know Alpha Theta, um, again, I don't know what they have coming out, but I you can see there's going to be a bunch of new stuff coming out, especially considering that 2020, 2021, and 2022 – Supplies were very, very tight. They had lots of probably problems getting stuff over from the manufacturers to the U.S. And I'm sure them and all the other manufacturers, Denon and everyone else, has stuff in the pipeline coming out. Is there anything you guys are looking forward to? Is there something that you're – I know Jeff was uh, – Jeff is a big LD, uh, um, LD Systems fan for LD Sounds and – I like the Maui fives and he has the, the bigger Maui's. Um, I also like RCF and, you know, everybody likes some people like JBL, some people like EV. Uh, EV just came out the new, a couple new uh, E-verse, uh, the, with the, uh, the 12 and the 15. And are you looking for there anything new? Uh, there's something that you're waiting for, something you're hoping someone may drop or something. So I'm going to start with Matt. I know uh, you're always buying stuff uh, from manufacturers overseas is there something that you're looking for, something you'd like to see drop from either an overseas manufacturer or one of the main brands here? Uh, I want like Astera knockoff tubes that actually look like Astera. Uh, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for somebody to come out with actual tubes that 
aren't crappy plastic ones like the both lighting tubes or the glow tubes or the galaxy tubes or even the ones I have. Like I, I want actual Astera knockoffs that look legit. I don't know. Uh, other than that, not much. I mean, I I only I don't buy audio from China. I only buy uh, lighting and special effects. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm pretty much set. I've got a pair of Watch FX twos that I'm gonna reprogram some lighting with this week, uh, just for a different setup, and then uh, reprogram some lasers. And we're pretty much set for the season. Just because I didn't really. I, I realize it's been a year since I reprogrammed the lasers and uh, the scenes from this weekend were a little stale, uh, at least to me. So um, uh, that's in the pipeline. But no, I'm I'm good for now. I'm good on gear. I do want to buy a pair of Meyer X40s, um, but those are 11000 for a pair. So yeah, and that's dealer price. My buddy's a dealer for Meyer, but they sound so good. And he's he would build also... Um, like my goal is to, if I get those have him build out like a case rack uh, w with like processing and power and all that. So I just roll it into a venue and plug, plug, mixer, done. Uh, that's what I want to get to the point of because I'm tired of putting everything on a table and breaking it down, putting it in a backpack and running a bunch of cables. And yeah, the venue we were at this weekend, nobody saw this, but where the power drop is, where the, the spider box is, is right behind where my DJ booth is. So everything that's on the right side I have to run cables all the way around and do my booth. Um, so I, I, there is like two plugs over there so I can plug like light stuff in, but it's not like equipped to handle uh, anything massive. So plus audio, lighting, laser, serial cables, all of that has to be ran. So that's the thing that takes me the most amount of time. I've been looking for solutions to cut down my setup and tear down time. That's, that's the goal this year is to just, whether it's, putting everything in totes or uh, flight cases or something. I'm just, it takes too many trips and it starts to get annoying. Well, that's when you, ha you hire uh, staff to help you. You know, that's, that's one of the things. I, always, uh, I don't like paying people. I'm Jewish. You know this. <laughs> oh, but still pay the money, make your life easier. And so I do. I, I, uh, what I did this weekend was, uh, so I had my buddy who was doing the lasers. He helped me set everything up. And then I had my other friend who's the one who shot all the content. I gave him my pocket three gimbal and all that stuff on my Instagram was shot by him. And I paid him a hundred, hundred bucks plus an Uber from uh, there to his house. So he didn't have to drive just to take content and help us tear down at the end of the night. And I think that's, that's what I might start doing is just finding people to just pay a hundred bucks, 150 bucks to just come shoot video of dancing, maybe grab a meal. If I can get a vendor meal for you, help us tear down and just that way we're out of there quick. That that whole setup only took us an hour and eight minutes to get in, in California, $150, isn't that like, you know, one meal at in and out burger? It's a lot of money to some people. So, I mean, California's, not cheap, town, California's not a cheap state to live, live in. They're, you know, they're taxes not really out there and everything. They're not, not cheap, man. You, you gotta, you gotta find people like me that don't value their time. And that's, that's the goal. <laughs> the golden goal. You got to find people that don't value their time. And if they're not doing something on a Saturday night and would rather come listen to some great music and uh, he's a friend of mine too. So just listen to great music and get paid to do it. I mean, Hey, it's either that or sit at home. So it works. There uh, you go. So Mr. D uh, Mr. Dixon, <laughs> I know you had a little technical error and we welcome back here, sir. G for you, is there anything that you're like looking for, which someone will drop some, you something that you want to have something, that you're kind of wishing for? Um, not as far as equipment, but I, I keep eyeing this the Jackery every time I go into um micro center. So maybe this summer I can move that into my budget and get one of those just to have it. So when I do the outdoor events, everything I don't have to be worry about where the um outlets and stuff is. And the one thing is it a life pro battery or is it a lithium ion battery? Um, I just know I just I have no idea. I just know it's the seven hundred dollar range one, just a little under a thousand dollars. Look and see and see if it's lithium ion or, or life pro. You want life pro life pro batteries don't degrade like lithium ion do. I, I I've talked a little bit about this before, and they actually hold the charge longer than lithium ion. They're more closer I, I, they're chemically is is different they have a longer life uh versus five years they have like a eight to nine year life 
expectancy. Uh, lithium ion is about five years is is uh, their life expectancy. So, and lead acid is about four to five years as well. So lead acid is really heavy, lithium ion very light. Life Pro, I think is about the same weight. It may be a little bit heavier, but you can find them on Amazon. You can find them in different areas. Uh, the Life Pro uh, batter, uh, batteries inside those uh, Jackery-like units, and they will give you a much longer life. So that way it's not $700 every you know four or five years because eventually batteries do wear out like everything else wears out. And speaking of stuff wearing out, uh, Tommy, um, what about you? Is there something that you're looking for, some piece of gear that you're like, hey, I, I hope they maybe someone drops this or – Alpha Theta comes out with a whole new this, or maybe Denon or whoever? Uh, well, I'm really not a fan of the new mixer or the new controllers that I've seen Alpha Theta drop. I think they've only done two, but one of them is that new one with the screen. I think it just looks super cheap, not something that I would have any interest in buying. Uh, one of my buddies, though, does have the new, I think it's the Rain 4 controller, um, and it's really right. nice. Yeah, it's great. It's a lot yeah, of fun. that's what. Yeah, that's what you have. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna definitely start shopping around a little bit more with other companies, seeing what they bring to the table. Uh, I just got a new controller like maybe two years ago, but I have been thinking about getting a second one, uh, something smaller that's not in the flight case, uh, just so that when I am playing bar gigs, I have something bigger than my old pioneer sr2 that i'm still using but something that's not as heavy in a flight case like my uh 1000 so i've been looking at some other options potentially as uh pioneer rev 5 or looking at what rain has to offer um but other than that i might also invest in up lights but i'm just i'm at a weird crossroads right now where some of the events i'm doing if it's a private event or a wedding the up lights would be a good addition, but certain events like school dances and even a private event like that, I could easily reach out to the guy that I work with for production and have him uh, rent out to me items like that. So I'm not totally sure if it's worth buying myself or not. I, I would probably say for you, especially with, with school and everything like that, I would probably say maybe hold off and you know you can rent that stuff for now and lease it uh, for the events you have versus um, going on buying a lot of stuff. Having a few lights, yeah, I could see, you know, buying, you know, a couple lights to have them, you know, and do, you know, off-site or off-wall uh, lighting, indirect mm -hmm. lighting to light stuff up. So that would help you out a lot. And then uh, really quickly, uh, back to you, Mr. Dixon. Uh, New Picard says, uh, Den of Tool. Uh, on YouTube, uh, gives information on battery backups, and I know Project Farm. I watch I watch his channel all the time. He has one on batteries too. They have he has a bunch of uh, video on there for battery packs and other things. But like for the Life Pro batteries, chemically um, have a little better uh, life on them than lithium ion for chemically. Um, they're a little more stable too. Um, Jeff, what about you? I know. Uh, you love your LD systems. You wanted to get see if they come out another generation and something a little better. But anything else that you got, uh, you're hoping for? Or? Not really. Uh, I'm pretty good with everything. Um, you know, I, I may sell some lighting at some point. And the only thing I was thinking about getting were those. Um, uh, they're the what are they? Wash moving heads. I got like 36 LEDs. Um, uh, you know, it, it's just a, another option. They're, uh, you know, Chinese are on eBay and they're dirt cheap. And, uh, you know, I, I may pick up a pair of those and see how those work as opposed to my, you know, my, uh, my three sixties, but, um, now I don't really have a, you know, a, a must have list this year. My setup is pretty, it, it's working pretty good for me and, you know, I've, Got nothing, nothing in the you know, wrong with it that I have to replace. So, uh, controllers doing fine. Uh, I did buy a small little mini controller uh, just as a backup uh, late last year, and my son will be using that uh, in April. I have a, uh, two gigs in one day, so he's going to take one. It's just a, a school dance uh, for an elementary school, and he's going to take that while I am at a, a bigger event. So, you know. Uh, he'll take the 
he'll take the uh, big speakers and I'll take the LD systems and, you know, we'll you know, split up and he'll take the backup uh, laptop and I'll take the main laptop and, you know, so I got more than enough gear. <laughs> I've got enough to, to do two gigs at the same time. So yeah, I don't need to be buying cocker. That's the way you do it. Turning the family into a multi-op. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody's like. You're running a multi-op now. I'm like, yeah, technically. <laughs> why? Why not? But, not there's nothing but, wrong. But uh, I'm, I'm paying him. I'm paying him. Uh, you know, basically, you know, slave wages. So it is what it is. Well, you are paying for his house, food, water, electricity, <laughs> video yeah. games. Yeah, and and, and I just got the um, I just got the insurance bill coming up. Uh, he turned sixteen last Friday, so he gets his license this Friday. So yeah, phew, boom, that, that went through the roof. <laughs> so uh, yeah, people in North Carolina, please stay off the sidewalk for the next few weeks. Well. Uh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, Jordan Taylor, what about you guys? Are you guys looking forward, looking for anything for this year, especially with all the things that you have going on? Uh, I know you're always buying stuff for like centerpieces and so forth, but DJ gear wise, is there stuff that you're looking for that you'd like to have, like to add? I know uh, I was talking to you at the last wedding show, Jordan, about the, like the, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, bun booth a little bit and also talking about like uh, Brentley has is the uh, Toadmatic booth with a TV built in the front of it. Uh, is yeah. there something like that you're looking for? Or... Uh, I don't really think so. Uh, we told ourselves we can't buy anything else <laughs> right now. <laughs> Do we want things? Not... Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think we're pretty content right now. I think mostly it's just getting through this year you know mentally we acquired a warehouse full of decor last year so so it's quite literally gotta just you know make it through the year don't get burnt out well i know who get to come ground. bug when if, if someone asks for centerpieces i'm like hey i got some of the centerpieces for you i have someone who does dishes uh, antique dishes i have someone who does that I, uh, you know, according to photographers, you know, again, known to people and known stuff. And this is one of the things I want you guys to think about. Uh, and I see some some chat down here. I see uh, DJ Fire. What's going on, DJ Fire? I see you're here. Glad you're in here after a hard days of work. Uh, and this is one of the things I want you guys to think about. <clears throat> when you have your business, you're out there doing stuff and you see other DJs at wedding shows and you talk to them, you kind of get a feeling with them. Are they a nice person or like anything else, like any profession, are they uh, not nice? And the people who are nice and are professional and who you talk to, who share a mindset with you, those are the people you want to build relationships with because we as DJs can't do everything. If I have something in, you know, in Northwest Indiana, I have two people now I can rely on. And I have Adrian E, who's right there, right across the border in Chicago. And I have a Jordan and Taylor at their company. So I have two other people. If I can't do something in that area, I much rather see them get the, the job than uh, someone else because I know how they are and I see how they do things and how detail oriented they are. And I know how detail oriented uh, you know, Adrian is. I see how they are. So those are people who I want to align with. Just like if I saw something up in Wisconsin that Brentley was in his area, I would, you know, refer Brentley to him. Uh, just like I have my friend who's a little west of me, uh, Darren, who's been on the show. If I can't do something, I refly, I re, I re, uh, we can talk right. I have a refer to him and say, hey, this is a person. And having those referrals to other DJs and building bridges, it helps you out because you can you can bounce ideas off him, give him a phone call. Hey, dude, I was thinking about this. What do you think? I don't know, you know, and that's that's part of building a network and having that network, just like here in the show, we have this network I have here with everyone here, and I do consider everyone here friends. I, I would go to dinner with anyone here anytime they want to go to dinner uh, with me They and Tracy. I would say no problem. You know, I've been to lunch with Tommy a bunch of times. I, you know, I have no problem with that because the fact that I like talking stuff. I like being social. I like being you know, out there and explain what I do and hearing what, how other people do things too, because my way is not always the right way, but it's a way I'm, I'm used to it. And I may say, Hey, you know, what about this? What about that? But the big important thing is that you out there to DJ, finding other DJs, building a relationship with other people and other professionals in the entertainment and wedding industry, 
you know, because I just do weddings, that's the people who I focus on. But the thing is that if you just do birthday parties or you just do karaoke at bars, having that relationship with other people in that area and do that stuff, you never know what you run into. You never know what you see. You never know what you find out about software. And speaking of a man who knows about all the fun stuff is DJ Fire, who's coming in right now. He's coming in on fire, as always. And if you haven't seen his YouTube channels, he has a couple YouTube channels, including a product review channel. He's always showing lights. I know he always shows us Shed's lights, and he had a Shed's light. There you go. There's his uh, there's his command center right there. Uh, he has his <laughs> Shed light he was talking about. I think that's what you're talking about, Jeff, with the multiple lenses that kind of could do a wash or it could do a, a tight beam. I think that's the one you're talking about you're looking at maybe getting. No, wash. Okay. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's I, one of the things I, that, you know, Jeff, if you're interested in those, I can get you a good deal. I'm an affiliate of Shed, so, um, which I'm not 100% sure, but I get commission off my sales, and they double paid me this month. So, I don't know if they're just doing it to be nice, but I got paid at the beginning of the month, and I just got paid at like midnight last night. So, I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> not going to say no. They, they want to pay you for your affiliate. That's fine and great. <laughs> And that's the thing. If you find stuff on his channels, click on the links down down there on his channel. He has links to the proxy reviewing, so that way he does get uh, a few coins, a few tokens, if you would say, in in the basket. And that's the other thing is that you might want to also again look at stuff and and hear what people are saying about products. And speaking of the last thing, we're going to talk about really quickly here because we have a few minutes left here in the show. Uh, do you feel that Having extra people working with you. I know Matt was talking about his friend coming and recording video, but do you feel having <clears throat> a few extra hands at a show helps you or hinders you? I'm going to start with Jeff in this one because I know his sons have worked with him and I know his sons work really hard, but do you, Jeff, do you feel your sons help you or sometimes they kind of like hinder you because they slow you down because you could have done something faster by yourself? No, I, I, I use them when I absolutely have to. Um, you know, the big school dances, which, you know, I've got one in two weeks, um, uh, after my vacation, uh, I've got the uh, prom coming up. So, you know, 700 kids. So I'm bringing everything, uh, three subs, two tops and the whole works, um, a lot of lighting. And, you know, th that's when you need an extra pair of hands, you know, picking up, the, um, a lot of subs, a lot of tops, you know, you, it'll wear you out. Um, even if they, if even if I have to show them how to hook it up, you know, I need that manpower just to pick up stuff. So I don't want to break my back. Uh, I don't want to be injured or or just spent, you know. But you know, after getting set up, um, so that you know, it's when I need them, I need them. You know, it doesn't matter who, but you need that extra pair of hands for uh, moving a lot of gear. Uh, that, that's when you need them. Um, yeah, I, I have to go behind them and, you know, show them how to coil cable, uh, you know, show them how, where everything is stored and packed up, you know, and they're getting it, but it's no big deal. Um, I still couldn't do without having that extra pair of hands, getting those subs in and out of the Suburban. That's where you need them. Yeah, and that's, that's the, I know your, kid, your, your sons have seen stuff that they work really hard with you and they work hand in hand. And just like any, it doesn't matter, employee or friend or family member, that you have work with you, unless they do it a bunch of times, you you have to show them sometimes and explain to them what they're doing. Uh, you know, Tracy, the the thing is that again, she's been with the business for so long at the business that she knows how to put things away and do things, and it's it's one of the things having that value uh, with her uh, is very tremendous. Uh, I'm going to go to Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon, what about you, sir? Do you have? a friend or family member, or do you want to do it yourself? Or do you prefer to have an extra pair of hands with you? I would like to have an extra pair of hands, but I just don't have it right now consistently, I should say. So I have people when I do gigs, uh, mainly for like my friends and stuff, they'll help me. But as far as doing it for people I don't <laughs> know, it's pretty much me by myself. But yes, yeah, eventually I guess I'll get to that point where I, have somebody come, you know, tag along and help. And that's 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 an important thing. You want to make sure that you, especially time, some of the venues have limited time. You can got to be out within an hour or so. And if you bring a bunch of stuff in, 
you know, to take everything out, you may take you two hours to set up. They don't want to be out there for two hours tear down. And I've heard facilities talk about DJs who are by themselves and they have this huge step, which looks cool. But then, you know, it takes them like two hours to break down and then they're charging the couple or the DJ a fee for them because they got to pay for overtime for the staff there. And that's what they don't want to do. So, uh, so Matt, what about you? I know you said you got, you brought your friend with you, but you prefer to do with another person or by yourself? Uh, I only bring another person if I need to. Um, I don't like, I'm Jewish. I don't like paying people. Uh, so if I can swing, so most lighting setups that you see from me, uh, are manageable with by myself uh it's when we the minute we add either a photo booth or my bigger lighting setup with trussing or bigger subwoofers at that point then i'll bring a separate pair of hands but also yeah. with the rain four it's a little harder for me to do lighting and focus um because there's more buttons to press and uh, i'm having too much fun with stems so I may may look into just having an assistant again uh, to do lighting, even if it's like a smaller lighting setup. But um, again, that's that's the other problem is like I haven't increased my rates to keep up with inflation, and so like I can't afford to pay somebody. I used to pay one hundred and fifty three hundred bucks. So um, you know, if I have to factor that in, then I'm going to be booked a little bit less because. You know, that that pushed me up to like a three thousand dollar price range instead of where I'm at. So uh I don't wanna have to do that, but we'll see. I'm playing with some ideas for next year and um I don't know. It's uh, like I, I've got the lighting pretty much down anyway. So I'm trying to when I reprogram everything with the wash effects, I'm gonna program in like a bunch of uh longer scenes so I don't have to be like one hand over the keyboard anymore. And I, you know, not sound bad. I know that in the area of California you're in, you know, I, I don't know what the, how the prices work well there, but you have to charge with, with what's best for you, for your business. In every market, you guys have to charge what's best for you. But again, having that payroll, paying them whatever you pay your employees, um, always pay them a fair wage and always make sure you take care of them. Uh, make I, sure you I've been able to, when people talk about pricing, to me, it's like, what I've I've found, like you said, what works for me to where I still have a few people saying no, but I think what I include for my pricing and the content that I'm putting out is more than fair. And oh, yeah. if people really want that kind of energy and show, then the price is the price. Um, but then again, you get people that are just looking for a DJ and don't want to pay up. And those are just not the ones for me. But we also are not like uh, we just did a wedding show and I didn't think we were, but apparently we're the most expensive at the wedding show. And, um, but when you look at the prices and the packages based on what's included, it's almost impossible to measure because what I do is a bit more unique than your typical wedding DJ. So, and that's uh, the thing you had to separate yourself from yeah. everyone else. You know, a lot yeah. of people just show up, put two speakers up and put uh, a couple of par lights up and say, here you go. Look at this versus, you know, someone doing indirect lighting, someone doing, uh, you know, nice setups, nice, someone doing a booth, little video DJ and that kind of stuff, separate yourself from the typical DJ. You're like the atypical DJ. And speaking of atypical DJ service, I'm going to go to Jordan Taylor. Uh, what about you guys? I know you guys do all the other uh, stuff, but if you're just hired as a DJ, it's just the two of you go out or one of you go out or do you get the two we, of you go out? And bring we try out? to be together. There are times when we'll have two weddings that we need a DJ that we've booked in the same day. So he'll go out, I'll go out. And we do have people that we pay to come help us network for us. And so we can each have an assistant um, if we're by ourselves. Or even sometimes when we're together and we are doing, say, um, well, if we were going to do the photo booth with our DJ, yes, we'll probably pay someone to come run that too. Because our thing is, is we work so hard for so long that, Sometimes it's nice to just pay someone to run something or put something away, you know? Um, so I'm more yeah. than happy to pay people to help me if they want to come work. Typically, yeah, if it was a wedding, it was literally just DJ. It would just be me and her. Um, and uh, yeah, once the photo booth or anything else comes into play. But I've, I've definitely brought people out or assistance just because I wanted help carrying stuff and I could have done it by myself. But Sometimes keeping your employee busy too, giving mm -hmm. them the work and showing them things and teaching them things. 
uh, benefits too. So, yeah, Tr Tracy sometimes gets mad at me because uh, when we have our employees, one of our employees, sometimes I'm like, you can just relax, sit, relax. I'm paying you, relax. I'll take care of it, you know. And it's like. Tracy's like, no, he's he, we're paying him, get him to do this or get him to do that. It's like, yeah, yeah, but I feel bad sometimes. I don't know. I, I guess I'm too nice. Um, but that's just you know, just me with our employees. So uh Tommy, I know that uh you do a lot of things, you bring somebody you bring friends with, you know. Do you like give them a few bucks for McDonald's or do you actually uh pay them some a few bucks to help out, or you just try and do it yourself? Uh, I always pay when I bring somebody with, uh, the people that I bring with at this point are, uh, friends of mine that have come with me to gigs multiple times before. So they kind of know how to set things up, how I want things organized, you know, back in the car, cables rolled up, all that. Um, but even when I'm at the bar, I mean, if I bring a friend with me there, I usually am not paying them because it's more like they're able to come and hang out, but I always love having somebody with me. I think it adds to my creativity a bit too, because, you know, sometimes you've got somebody watching you play, you want to impress them a little bit, you might try something new. So it's always fun to do that. And then it's always just a huge help after a gig when you're tired. Um, if, if you're bringing equipment, when you're tired after playing all night to have somebody that can help you, uh, you have four hands instead of two, bringing stuff back out to the car, load in or load out is much quicker and you're able to, hit the road a lot faster. So I always, I always think it's worth it. Yeah. Bringing, bringing some extra hands always is nice to have. And I know a man down in central Illinois who does, he has more irons in the fire than I think that uh, Jordan and Taylor do uh, because he has a land, a landscaping business. He has a drone business. He has a review channel. He has a DJ business. Only thing he's not doing is open up a, a fast food restaurant or uh a uh hiring out to do uh i don't know what else photography or or videography or something mr dj fire glad to see you back I, here. Do, I do do videography for wcia news three in champagne so i technically do do videographies so. oh see now that there we go there's another one J jeff he's giving me some competition but uh different market so <laughs> anyways uh mr fire uh nathan sir do you, uh, I know you worked a few times with uh, DJ Mike James and a couple other guys uh, down there in uh, beautiful central Illinois. Do you try to uh, bring another person in or do you try to beast it out yourself? Um, it depends uh, on the size of the setup. Um, sometimes it's nice just to have someone to help. Um, me and Mike, instead of paying each other, we'll just switch out labor. He'll come help me. I'll go help him. Um, instead of paying each other, like I don't want to have to take money from him and he doesn't want to have to take money from me. So he's like, you know, let's just, you help me, I'll help you. You know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You know, I, I mean, I have paid him. Like we went down to do that, uh, wedding two, three years ago in Evansville, Indiana. And that's three and a half hours from my house or three hours or something like that. But so I paid him like a couple hundred bucks, something like that, to help me. Uh, we got the people that hired us, gave, gave us a hotel, paid for our food. Uh, we were down there for three nights, two nights. We could have probably came home two nights, but we stayed for the third night. They paid for it, and they couldn't get their money back. So I was like, well, we might as well use it. So, um, but, I mean, around here, we just switch out labor, unless it's something real, like, you know, labor intensive or something, and then you've got to, you know, I'll pay whoever or whatever. Um, most of the time, though, it's trying to find someone that's not busy, that's not got anything going on, or, you know, hey, I need help. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll help you. And then the day comes and they forget. Oh, yeah, I had this going on. I forgot. You know, and, yeah. So, I mean, other than, other than that, my big setup, I like to have people help, which I have another friend that, I don't know if he's been on my channel or not. My buddy Zach, my buddy Richard, uh, they both help me. Uh, Zach is busy a lot. Most of the time, he'll just say, "I'll come help you if you come help me do this." And then you know, but I have I have paid people before. So uh, Jordan and Taylor, I've never met you guys before. Where are you guys located at? We're at Crown Point, Indiana. Crown Point, Indiana. Good. Uh, 
Either you just tell people you're from Chicago or have you heard of Gary? (laughs) Um, So funny deal. I had uh, one one of the guys I went to school with, his wife, well, not wife at the time, girlfriend at the time, it's his wife now. He, he lives in Texas, and he came up to uh, Illinois to visit some of his family. They went to Chicago. Uh, his roommate at the time had never been to Chicago. He went up to Chicago. He took a picture, sent it to his girlfriend, Snapchat or something. And she's like, I thought you were going to Illinois. And she, he's like, what? She's like, where are you? He's like, Chicago. And she's like, I thought you were going to Illinois. And she's like, he goes, Chicago is in Illinois, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, there's a, another big YouTuber that lives over at Crown Point, Indiana named the Lawn Care Nut, or used to live over there. He lives in Florida now, but I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Alan Hayne, he used to do a lot of lawn care videos and stuff, but he was from Crown Point. So you might look him up and see some of your area on YouTube. But, uh, what, what type of events are you guys doing? Mostly weddings or you guys do school stuff or? So we actually have two separate businesses. So we have our wedding business, which is wedding decor, wedding DJ photo booth. And then we have local sounds entertainment that is more of the, your bar DJ, private party, grad party, you know. 50th reunion. 50th reunion, uh, stuff like we that. We do Singo, that kind of stuff. Uh, but like our, how sweet it is, is just strictly weddings. Strictly weddings. More of the, um, personal experience of it where like local sounds would be like a bar calls me and we need you to dj thursday night okay are you guys booked out a lot this year or you guys seem to have like a lot of i've had a lot of people contact me this year but a lot of people are just not wanting to spend the money um we i feel like we're doing pretty like every year we just it just is we're better and better, we say. We're not ever taking a step back. Um, with local sounds, we get more calls that are like not they don't it's not like a wedding where they're gonna call maybe a year ahead of time or yeah. months ahead of time. Um, unlike for the bar, it's like, hey, can you come here next Friday? And you're like, Well, yeah, I can. So it it it's up until last year, we only DJed under local sounds entertainment and we did do weddings. Um, And that's where we kind of came up in. And then we bought How Sweet It Is um, last July. And that was just decor. And then we combined and kind of did decor and entertainment all as one experience um, with the coordination and stuff. Because we kind of were already doing the coordination with, I mean, a lot of DJs do coordination without even realizing it. And and that's, uh, that's the thing is that, you know, having uh, multiple options for our customer is very important. And um, we, we have to end up here because it's the, uh, we're already over at uh, nine o'clock tonight. And I want to thank everyone for watching over here in the chat. A lot of people have said a lot of things in the chat. Um, and uh, New Picard said you saw the sheds and they look nice. Um, uh, let's see here. We got uh, one person saying that uh, the Flex 4 and Hercules T7. The T7, I heard some really great things about that. Uh, cool thing. He said that uh, his parents have helped out plenty of times. And Adrian E. Uh, said you'd like to have a hand every now and then. And good night, folks. Good show. Um, and cool things is a great show. Also, don't forget uh, Michael Jackson is from uh, Gary. You know, he, uh, cool thing pointed out, Gary is a hometown to the king of pop, Michael Jackson. So with that said, thank you for everyone coming in today. Jordan Taylor, thank you for coming in tonight. Love having you guys thank in the show. Guys. We want to have you guys back here again. Uh, if you guys have the time and you're always welcome back here. And uh, it's great having uh, friends like you in, in uh, not, again, not in the neighborhood, but close enough that you uh, if, we, if I need to I pull a trigger and say, hey, uh, I got a question for you. But uh, again, I want to thank you guys all out there for watching. And I'm actually going to do, uh, I'm going to do Dwayne tonight. Dwayne, take us out tonight. All right. I hope everyone enjoyed the show. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Take care and have a blessed week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.